Uh, hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I'll talk about microservices and um, web API. I'll show you how you could uh, build a web API with um, fast API framework on top of Python with Celery Distributed Queue and Rabbit and Queue. You know, uh, you may have a set of microservices, but at some point you need to call uh, these microservices from the outside, for example, from a um, web uh, browser or from another client. You need to have an entry point. You know, and you need to have this web API. And when a request comes from web API, uh, it, it may take time to um, process that request in microservices, if, especially if you talk about ML, it may take uh, some time, like if you train the model, for example. So we should be able to build asynchronous uh, web API and um, um, client should be able to uh, place as many requests as he wants and, and get uh, back the result when the result is ready. So there should be two um, uh, endpoints available. Uh, the first one to where we initiate a task and the second one where, where we get a response and check the st status of the task. Right, so the idea is um, that I'm using fast API to implement a REST uh, endpoint and uh, Celery is being used to implement asynchronous task. So when a request arrives through fast API, we create a synchronous salary task, which uh, is placed in a queue and it runs in the background. It doesn't block the main request. When a uh, job is done, task returns the result and uh, the fast API endpoint where we expose the result of the task, uh, that, there we can check the status of the task and get back the result. And when task uh, is running, um, salary task is running, obviously it needs to uh, send the event to a group of microservices to do the job. And we transmit the event using RabbitMQ, remote procedure call, and whatever microservices, microservices is supposed to handle the task, it gets the message, uh, does the job, returns back the result. And when salary task gets back the result, it propagates it uh, back to fast API endpoint where uh, result becomes available. Right, and the sample application uh, source code actually that I'll be showing today is uh, based on our uh, open source product that we develop. It's called Skipper. Its uh, source code is uh, on the GitHub. Uh, below the URL is below the video. And the idea of the Skipper is to implement um, a simple um, um, workflow for ML applications, uh, which would allow you to, in a simple way, to orchestrate multiple uh, services. For example, uh, data processing, uh, model training, uh, model serving, uh, whatever, uh, to um, orchestrate the services in the, in the flow uh, and be able to access that flow through the web API. And you should be able to uh, manage the flow in declarative way uh, so that in, in case in the future, a uh, new service arrives or you don't need to use uh, a certain service, you can uh, just change um, flow configuration declaratively and new flow will be executed. At this moment, we implemented um, Blueprint for uh, Web API uh, functionality and this is the thing that I'll be showing you today. So let's switch to the source code and let's see how it works. Okay, this is... Uh, uh, GitHub page where uh, our product is available and the stuff that I'll be showing you today is inside um, engine folder and there are instructions uh, how you could run uh, this engine. Uh, first you would need to start fast API, uh, second you will start uh, salary queue and uh, the, the third stuff, third thing is you could start uh, test client uh, for uh, Rabbit and queue uh, because we don't have yet uh, microservice which would handle um, uh, event, we implemented a test client which uh, handles the event and uh, returns back the result. Okay, let's let's go to uh, PyCharm and let's see the structure of um, the application. Right. And this is uh, the engine folder, the one that um, you saw of a moment ago, it was available in the, in the GitHub, so it's the same source code here. So the main entry script is endpoint. This is a fast API um, script <coughs> that implements uh, basically uh, fast. Uh, it, uh, here we register fast in, uh, API uh, router. There are multiple ways to implement uh, fast API application structure. I prefer the one where we have endpoint uh, script where we keep configuration for fast API, but we don't implement 
actual uh, methods. All the methods are implemented in router over here. And router is implemented in another script. Uh, and uh, we have two methods, actually three methods. So the first one is a test method. And two other methods are implementing the logic. The first one is a start, start workflow task. Mm, this method uh, gets the request to start the task, gets input data, uh, and it calls a salary task uh, to, to run a request in asynchronous way. And obviously, because task would take some time to execute, we return a st st status called uh, processing. This means task runs in the progress. And there's another method called workflow task uh, uh, result, uh, where we pass task ID, which we got from the first one. Uh, for the first method when task was uh, submitted. And using this task ID, we check if task uh, is completed or not. Uh, when task is completed, we can automatically get back the result and, and bring it back to the client. In Celery, there are multiple ways to how you could um, uh, set up uh, the task, uh, default one is in RPC, uh, and when uh, when task is executed, uh, it delivers a result back for RPC protocol. There are other ways you can set up a um, database and you can store a uh, result of the task in database if you want. Uh, but I prefer to use RPC. Okay, this is router. Uh, it's, uh, router is responsible to handle endpoint for fast API and uh, call uh, salary to initiate a synchronous task from the salary. Okay, then we have a worker uh, where we define configuration for salary. We point to uh, URL uh, where RabbitMQ is uh, broker is running because salary is also using RabbitMQ in the background to uh, to run the tasks and to do communication. Task itself is implemented in task script over here, and uh, this uh, fun this method is executed by Celery in a synchronous way in the queue. And uh, the thing we do here, we call uh, event producer class, and we we call um, we invoke method call from the event producer. And the idea here is that we transfer payload to event producer, and we get back the result. <clears throat> and by the way, there is another script called models. In this script, we implement uh, types, and these types are being used by FastAPI uh, for REST endpoints. Like for the input, for the output, uh, it automatically can map uh, these types uh, for the data structure that um, <coughs> REST uh, implementation is, is being made. Okay, and we, we stopped. Uh, we had event producer, right? Event producer is being used from a salary task. Event producer is implemented over here in the backend. And the idea of event producer is uh, to, to initiate um, RabbitMQ um, functionality and to send event uh, outside, uh, outside of the web API. And someone, some service should handle that request. Right, and what service will handle that request? We are not interested right now because this is not our business. We have a set of microservices <clears throat> and uh, uh, there should be dedicated service uh, that would handle the request and uh, return back the result. That, that's not our business at this, at, at this point. So we initiate um, RabbitMQ communication using um, a remote procedure call and we call um, our remote method using the through the queue, right? And we get back the result. And uh, the advantage of um, RPC with RabbitMQ is that we can not only send the event, but we can also get back the result of the event and, and use it, right? So not only send, but get, get back the result. So we send events and yeah, someone should handle it. At this moment, because we don't have um, a microservice which could handle the event, we, we implemented a test um, and test receiver, which uh, gets the event and uh, sends back some result. And the idea of this um, uh, example here uh, th that we see is, is uh, to to bring you uh, some sort of um, uh, solution blueprint because you can uh, use exactly the same scripts to implement your own 
uh, web API and uh, you can send event and your own microservice would handle it. All right, let's see how it works. So let's um, start, uh, let's go to the instructions, right? And let's uh, start a fast API server. Okay, server started and next step, let's uh, start a salary queue in the second window. Started as well. And let's uh, start our dummy receiver, uh, which will, uh, will get um, an event from Arabic and QQ. Okay, it's a waiting request. That's good. It's running. And now we can uh, initiate uh, a task. We can send a task. So let's open um, endpoint uh, specification for our uh, application. Let's uh, start training task. And uh, task type is being used in uh, uh, salary uh, to understand what type of event we should send. And if it uh, finds out that it's a training event, then it's publishing, then it, uh, RabbitMQ uh, will be using uh, training queue uh, to distribute the event and uh, services that subscribe to training queue uh, will get the event. Uh, another uh, type which is supported is in this um, implementation look here is inference task and if we will send inference task then we'll be using um, inference queue and uh, this means services that subscribe to inference queue will get that event and it will do the job and we'll see how it works so we have training task and payload let's put one two three four five and um, here we can say this is a um, uh, sample task okay Let's execute it. Uh, it says it's processing. And if you look into the application, we'll, we'll see that uh, <clears throat> because right now this is a dummy task. It doesn't do any job. It was actually completed immediately. And it was uh, this training task was processed by the uh, test client that is handling uh, training tasks. Now, if we copy uh, task ID and let's go to endpoint where we check the status. Execute and we see that this task is completed, uh, which is expected. Okay, now let's do something else. Let's uh, and on purpose I, ha I have one test client which handles by default training uh, tasks. Now, now let's send uh, inference task. And uh, let's see if it will be handled or not. Okay, so let's let's get back to over here and let's copy inference as a task type and we execute. It's processing fine, and if you check check back the log in uh, the in the third window because we we have a client running which is listening for uh, training events there is no log printed because this inference was not handled and in the salary log we see the task was created but but there is no response because there is no uh, there, there is no service which could handle the task so let's let's start the service let's stop uh, the service uh, which handles training and Let's use, um, let's change in our um, uh, handler, let's change, uh, let's subscribe to the um, inference queue. Of course, in practice, this would be uh, another service that would handle it. And in, in here, I just to make it simple, I just replace uh, manually the, the queue name in, in, in client to skipper inference and over here as well. So now client would listen for uh, the inference tasks. Let's start the client. 
And as soon as it was started, immediately a request was processed because uh, there was a request waiting. There was no client uh, to process a request from the inference queue. But as soon as the client was started, immediately a request was processed. And if you check the salary log, the task in salary was completed as well. So now if you go back over here and let's copy paste uh, task ID and let's check it. Okay, it still shows processing, but yeah, it's actually it's actually should be completed. But maybe I just made a mistake by copy pasting the ID or whatever. But um, in general, the task uh, should be completed. Okay, let's let's start uh, let's start one more task with inference. Let's uh, execute and let's copy the ID of this new task and this one is completed and if we check back block we see that inference task was uh, executed okay so this was a quick um, uh, explanation how you could build web API uh, with fast API, salary and RabbitMQ and send event from um, salary task uh, with RabbitMQ and someone, some service from, from the group should be able to handle it and uh, respond. And web API would run in, in, uh, in its own container. Uh, uh, it would not be related to any uh, microservice, it's standalone. Right. So in the next video, I'll show you how you could uh, handle uh, the event from actual service, from the training service, and how you could initiate uh, model training. So thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned and, stay tuned and see you next time. Bye.